Hi, I'm Michelle Bege with a look at what's happening in Latin America now. But first, our news trivia. In which Latin American country is there a castle that resembles the work of famous Spanish architect and artist Antoni Gaudí? We'll have the answer later. Let's go to my colleague Joel Richards for a special report. Uruguay's presidential elections will go to a second round after no candidate was able to win more than 50% of the vote in last weekend's elections. The centre-left candidate, Jamandu Orsi of the Broad Front, took the most votes with around 43%. Centre-right candidate of the National Party, Alvaro Delgado, was second with 26% of the vote. But a coalition of Delgado, along with other conservative parties, tallied more votes than the broad front, meaning that a tight race is expected between the two candidates. Many analysts have highlighted how the country of three and a half million people has bucked the regional trend of seeing outsiders or candidates with more extreme views taking prominence. But that is also the challenge now for Orsi and Delgado to offer something different to the electorate in order to win over the votes needed to win the presidency. Last Sunday, Uruguayans also voted in two plebiscites, one related to measures to tackle crime, the second to do with reversing a recent pension reform. Both votes lost, but those issues, crime and social security, as well as employment and low wages, will be the key issues ahead of the second round runoff on November the 24th. In Bolivia, the police is investigating an alleged assassination attempt against former president Evo Morales. He said his car came under sustained gunfire on Sunday night in the Cochabamba region. Morales posted a video on social media which appeared to show two bullet holes in the windscreen of a car in the front seat of which he was sitting. Bolivian officials say the former president's convoy had fled an anti-drugs patrol, during which his security team fired at police and ran over an officer. The incident is under investigation. Cali, Colombia is the host of the United Nations Biodiversity Conference, COP16, and six presidents attended the two-week event. This is the world's biggest nature protection conference, and officials from Colombia say this summit has placed biodiversity loss on an equal footing with the climate change crisis. The event is the largest since the first summit was held in 1994, with more than 23,000 delegates in attendance in the official Blue Zone and more than half a million citizens visiting booths and exhibits in the Green Zone. Officials hope actions will be taken to prioritize biodiversity conservation. Check out these images of thousands of seashells in a Chilean exhibit. 1,000 shells of various shapes and sizes all belong to the poet Pablo Neruda. The exhibitors at the University of Chile say this showcase called Molusca, Poetry of Seashells, honors Neruda's work but also takes a critical look at collectivists like Neruda. While well-intentioned, collecting these rarities has a negative effect on the environment. Now let's check out what stories we're following for next week. We are following Ecuador's sustained power cuts. The cuts began at the end of September, and on October 25th, the government announced that instead of decreasing the amount of time, they would increase to 14 hours a day. The blackouts are causing concern among citizens, as many report losing jobs and work. Businesses say they can no longer produce as before due to the power outages. The industrial sector, small and medium-sized entrepreneurs have all been affected. According to the government, the crisis is due to severe droughts affecting the country and the fact that the power grid is highly dependent on hydroelectric plants. And now the answer to our news trivia. The answer is C. In Sao Paulo's second largest favela called Paraisopolis lives Estevão Silva da Conceição, known as the Brazilian Gaudí. This is because the Brazilian gardener has spent the last four decades building an extravagant castle. The striking structure is his home, decorated with colorful broken tiles, porcelain plates and brownstones on its facade. It has now become a tourist attraction in the poor neighborhood. From humble beginnings, this gardener says he had never heard of the famous Spanish artist Gaudí when he first began to draw comparisons. And that's it for this week. We'll see you again soon on Latin America Now.